Well, what's up, boys? It's the Nostalgic Gaming Channel. Back at it again with your favorite Sunday series, RTS Sunday. Today, as always, we're playing Age of Mythology, and we have a very special mission. This one is plucked straight from the Odyssey, straight from history. You guys may recognize it as soon as we jump into it, right? It's called Old Friends, but really, there's some more to this mission than Old Friends. So grab some water, grab a snack, let's jump right into it. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and yeah, we're getting into it. So don't forget on the last mission, we were able to reunite all the pieces of Osiris and get him back together. That ship belongs to Odysseus. From the looks of it, Poseidon hasn't been kind to him. Bring us around. We'll go ashore and see if there's any sign of him. If Odysseus landed here, at least he's eating well. Ajax, wait. The pigs. They don't look... Something is wrong. Arcanthos, help! The crew and Bulum. We're all going to die! You won't Bulum. die today. Maestro. Let's find Bulum. the others. Ah, a villager! Don't Mal let him get me! Mal is so if you're familiar with the Odyssey, right? And if you're familiar, familiar with ancient Greek mythology, you know that Odysseus and his men landed on this island controlled by Circes. Right, and Circes Island is called Ea. A E A E A. Wow, that's a mouthful, and that is a lot of vowels. Can I buy a vowel, please? I'd be bankrupt. So, little history on the actual story here of Persephone, right? And first, let's talk about the game, right? This starts off as a no build mission. It's a fun little side mission. It's not really integral to the story, it's more of a payback homage to the actual story of the Odyssey, right? Homer's Odyssey written many, many years ago. Um, so, in this story, right, Odysseus and his men are sailing home after the long Trojan War. And as they're sailing, they're lured in by a siren song, right? That siren happens to be Circe. Unfortunately, once the villagers get in the tower, they don't actually attack. They just kind of hide in there. That would be a pretty cool little mechanic if they attacked or... But the villagers, other than attacking your pigs, they don't do much. Okay, so... Um, Circe's is like a siren, and she lures people over to her island, so that way she can trick them. She's well known to turning people into animals, right? There's a couple different stories of her turning people into animals, so she's definitely a dangerous person. She's like a minor goddess who has two parents, like one one of them's a, a pretty big shot, uh, and the other's uh, a, like a water nymph. So she's not super powerful, she has sorcery. Um, the way that she turns people into animals is by using like poison food mixed with, so it's not poison, she used a potion to mix it into their food and wine, invites them for a huge uh, feast, and then feeds them these things, right? So Odysseus, the hero of the story, right? Odysseus is able to convince um, her, Circe, to turn his men back into men and let them sail home. But he instead stays for, you know, a few years and then has a couple kids with her. And then I guess when he leaves, right, I don't think she's super happy about it because he's already got a family, right? So he wants to go back home after the long war and everything. So after he leaves... Cersei lets him go, but he runs into the actual sirens, another set of sirens, right, who try and lure him into the rocks, right? So, I'm going to play you guys a little song here. Whenever I think about sirens, this is, like, the song that I think about, mostly because, like, it's such a big part of my childhood. And if anyone, I'm going to play it in the background, if anyone can guess the name of the song in the comment, you're definitely going to have a pinned comment, even though there'll probably be a few, but it'll still be pinned, right? But I'll give you a shout out in the next video, right? Because that's this game was such a big part of my childhood. I played so many times, right? And it's very hard to uh, get the same level of couch co-op that you get in this game. That's going to be your hint, right? It was on. I played it on the PlayStation 2, so think about that era. All right, I'm putting the song. So it's such a haunting, beautiful, hypnotic, melodic song, right? 
with beautiful female vocals, right? It's hypnotizing. When you play it in this game, it's unsettling the atmosphere. You don't know where you're at. Something tragic just happened. So it's really an amazing song. And if I think about a siren song, this would lure me into the rocks, right? I'd end up in Cersei's uh, den over here and get turned into an animal. But this mission, getting through to the end, right? So half of it's a build mission or no build mission and half of it is a uh, attack the fortress and win mission, right? The first portion of it's really simple, right? But it's fun to go around and collect all the pigs and make sure that none of them die, right? I'm sure if games had achievements back in these days where you could earn like steam achievements and whatnot, um, getting through and not letting a single pig die would probably be a steam achievement. But luckily we can go right, right past the fortress, right? We can explore to our little heart's content. Because why is the fort going to attack a boar or a bunch of pigs, right? They don't suspect that we're actually an army in waiting. You know what? They should suspect it, right? They know Cersei's. These are all Cersei's guys. And they know of her evil power. She's not a very nice person. So I'm surprised that they didn't think about that. Uh, but luckily, you know, I don't, I don't remember if you actually save Odysseus in this portion of of the mission, right? I wonder if you could speed run this too by killing the enemy fortress with your pigs. I'm sure that wouldn't actually be a speed run, but that could probably be a little, a little hack here, a little glitch hack, because I don't. If you attack things, I don't think they actually attack you. But um, you'd think that Odysseus would also have become a boar, right? But I guess Odysseus really didn't get turned into an animal, it doesn't seem like, right? Just from my brief reading of the, the story, I'm not super familiar with... I mean, I know the story, but I'm not super familiar with the intricate details of it. I guess that's a major detail of it, whether Odysseus got turned into a pig or not, but... I'm not super familiar with the details enough to give you guys an accurate recreation, right? I haven't fully read the Odyssey yet, but actually I bought one from Barnes and Nobles, like a kid's friendly book. So it's got lots of pictures. That means that I can read it because uh, I like picture books, right? Much easier to di digest. Oh, my guy's immediately trying to run off into danger. Why are you doing that? Knock that off. And for some reason I have a single priest. Maybe he wanted to study the Greek culture, right? But that's so weird that you have, like, everything is Greek except for the priest. And maybe that's just their, their way of giving you, like, a healing unit. Because they actually attack you pretty pretty frequently in this mission, right? This mission is it's not a super easy one once you get to this build mission, this portion of it. The enemies are fast and aggressive. And I end up being attacked multiple times. I didn't anticipate, and I'm playing on moderate, right? So I'm not, I'm not this epic gamer who's playing on Titan and you know adding diff more difficulty to the missions. I'm just a normal guy who likes to play real-time strategy games, right? Uh, I'm not terrible at them. I'm pretty decent. I would, I actually got master rank in StarCraft. In case you guys hadn't heard that, right? StarCraft two. Um, but even for that. They're unexpectedly aggro, and it's like, how do they even know that I'm here? How, did they sound the alarm? Like, like that mission where my favorite mission with the pirates, and when you get 10 minutes to, to hide from uh, um, our enemies, and you can either get the gold colossuses or the, how there's like several several different ways to play that mission, right? Like they didn't know I was there, right? And I was literally right outside their walls. How are these guys gonna know that I'm here? And they sent out like a whole raiding party. It's not like these guys had phones so that they can hit them up and, you know, hit that hotline bling and say, hey, we're being attacked by Arkantos and his men. So I wonder if. Let, and let's look it up. Let's look it up. I wonder if Cersei is Greek. So it takes place in Greek mythology. So there has to be some type of link to Greece, right? Because. You don't really have sphinxes and scorpion men in Greek mythology, so I would have to assume that she's at least Greek or Greek adjacent. And just looking at 
the smallest, quickest Google search, first page. I accidentally used Bing by accident, so I don't know how accurate it is. Take this with a grain of salt. This is not a sponsored video, but it says that AEAEA -E -E -A is also called the island of Paxos in the Ionian Sea near the Greek coast. So I would classify it under the umbrella of the Mediterranean Greek, right? And my whole point of that is I'm sure that most of the people, I guess on a small island like this, you probably know the majority of the people, right? And on a small island like this, having that size of a military, like you'd probably reckon, the military guys would probably recognize the military of, of the other enemy, right? So it makes sense that they would, once they see our military units, they'd attack them other, other than being confused as to like, hey, how did this giant military end up on our, on our island? But they could probably see our ships too, and they're like, wow, those look like not AEA ships. Those look like ships from a different land. They're probably flying the flag of um, Atlantis because they're Atlanteans specifically in this mission portion, right? But I digress. It's video game logic. Let's just roll with it, boys. Let's just roll with it. So I get that Pegasus relic, right? But since I already have a Pegasus, I don't think it ends up giving me one anymore. Because I don't ever see myself spawn a second Pegasus unless I build one, right? So maybe I messed up and I jumped the gun a little bit by building the Pegasus. But I like to have... Oh, see? Here's attack number one. Right? I like to make sure I have my eyes in the sky, right? My vision. You know what they say? Uh, knowledge is key. It's a major key. So I thought I did a tricky thing here, right? So you're going to see in a little bit. A lot of the times when enemies have walls, you can use those walls to your advantage, right? Because the enemies can't attack their own wall. They can upgrade it to a gate, right? And upgrading it to a gate is not very difficult. But in some specific instances, right? Especially in the campaign, the enemy will not upgrade their wall to a gate. So you're able to, as you can see, it sounds like I'm building walls here, right? I am. So since the enemy won't upgrade it to a gate, they end up uh, just being stuck on one side of the wall, right? And they end up attacking your gate. You can hit them with archers. You can do whatever you need to do, right? It gives you a little bit of time. I forgot that there's literally a gate right by my town center. So I probably should have built a wall or some towers right there. But sometimes the towers are jank and they'll attack the wall instead. Like they'll auto aggro the wall and they won't stop. So the plan doesn't end up working out. And at this moment I realized I messed up because they just ran right into my base, right? And they're actually sending a decent amount of units, right? And granted, I'm just ramping up. I'm about to start ramping up my unit production and I have luckily um, the power of my town center here. So I have the immediate backup of the town center. I have my heroes, which they don't have. But I'm, I still take some heavy losses and some heavy damage. I lose my priest, right? So probably an envoy or an ambassador, and now he's gone, so Egypt is not going to be happy. And who are we going to pick? Of course... We're going to pick Apollo, and you're going to see why. Usually Dionysus is the way to go, right? I love me some giant dinosaurs, right? Those are my, uh, the Hydra units, those are my favorite units, probably, other than the Gold Colossuses, those are my favorite Greek units, uh, other than, like, Minotaurs, but those, I love those ones, right? I love the mechanic of you kill more people, your guy gets more powerful. And granted, sometimes you have to, like, specifically target and it doesn't always work and it's a little janky sometimes but man seeing that five-headed hydra is so satisfying especially as it's crushing a bunch of enemy units at the same time like it's just legitimately a satisfying endeavor oh there's odysseus in there there's a little piggy stuck in there that little piggy went to market see i didn't get a second pegasus from that relic, I just got, I just built another one. 
So I think you guys can see what I'm doing here with the underworld, right? It's my favorite little cheese on these types of missions, right? Just like we did with uh, every mission that you're split apart and you have this ability, it trivializes going the long distance and fighting the extra forts. Because you know there's two forts right in the middle there, right? It totally trivializes that whole battle. Come on, Minotaur. Go and gore some people. You know, it'd be pretty cool too is if you had. So, this is a mission that I really enjoy because it takes. And granted, the whole thing is loosely based on the Trojan War, right? So, it's all kind of based on Greek mythology and, and all that, and the Odyssey and the Iliad. But the fact that they took a diversion mission here, like, it's. This has literally no important parts of the story. There's no integral mechanic. It doesn't forward the main campaign. It's just a, a fun mission, right? That is a callback to, you know, the Greek mythology. And it would be pretty cool if they had some more of those. Like, they were, we were able to go in and, you know, um, we had to fight Medusa. Or you get to Theseus and the Labyrinth, right? And there's this big jacked Minotaur that you have to kill. And it's a no-build mission. And you go through and you have to explore and if you step the wrong way you step in a trap or you take too long and you fail the mission or something like that'd be pretty sweet right Greek mythology is full of so many different stories right so many oh, what are my villagers doing what are they doing I'm losing so many but Greek mythology is full of so many different like wonderful stories that we would totally be able to make a bunch of different like really cool side missions for this like if someone took the time and effort to make some fan-made content or if the developers because I, I thought i heard there was a rumor about like maybe an age of mythology 2 or something like that maybe i'm mistaken but if they did i would eat that up i would buy that right away remakes i'm always kind of worried about ever since i got burned by blizzard right with that warcraft 3 frozen throne remake that thing was absolutely garbage Right, we got scammed big time, but it would be nice to see some new content, right? For because this is a fantastic game, right? I think it's an underrated one where a lot of people never really played it. Maybe because it has a tinge of history and it has a tinge of learning on it, so people are kind of like, well, you know, it's not as fun because it's you know it's based on learning, which is not the case. Learning is fun, knowledge is power. Keep that in mind. That's your lesson for the day. Never stop learning. No matter what it is, find something you're passionate about. Find something you enjoy. Learn a little bit about it every day. Keep your brain expanding, right? That's how you keep yourself healthy in the long run. But before that rant, like I was saying, there would be it'd be pretty sweet if we had some different stuff here, right? That you could add some different side missions, right? There's a ton of heroes. In Greek mythology, there's a ton of different stories that can be told. And look, see, this is what I talk about janky tower mechanics. Is my tower has decided to continue attacking the wall, and I can't, I don't know how to get it to stop. Right? So I'm going to try and upgrade it, and maybe that will stop it. But it doesn't have, like, a stop command. I tried pressing S, I tried pressing all those things. And I built another temple there. Um, because... I figured building the temple, I would have more ability to heal my units now. Because they would just stand by this temple where, where the people keep attacking us. And luckily, it looks like the next closest gate is that further one down there. Unless they could slip in through the wall. So we make sure guys are all healthy and healed up, right? I'm sure they're much happier being uh, humans than they are being pigs. But who knows, maybe if they weren't going to get eaten, the pig life might be pretty easy, right? They just go around, roll around the slop, right? Eat whatever's on the floor. Chill. Oh, apparently they can come in from the other side. That's not good. Don't kill my fort. Please don't kill my fort. That's an expensive building. For some reason, my villagers up on the temple keep running into every time I recall my villagers. I thought they would be outside of the range. But for some reason, they keep running right back towards the uh, building, even though they don't need to. So these guys end up going through that gate down there. That doesn't make any sense. I guess it depends on where the units get sent from. And that's what I think. I think in this one, there's a couple different unit spawn areas. 
where they get spawned from uh, and attack you. But you know what? In all honesty, I probably could have built a little wall behind it. Especially because I had just upgraded my walls and made them pretty chunky. Pretty beefy. But hey, that's a lot less uh, lot less dangerous, boys. And we like to live dangerously here. And my poor villager got stuck in those houses. Uh, he's supposed to be over there building houses and he got stuck. So I feel bad for him. Kinda. Not really. At least he's chilling. He doesn't have to mine for gold and he doesn't have to farm. He doesn't have to go worship at the temple. So at least he's chilling. But somehow, so initially it was driving me wild because the villager not working indicator popped up and it wouldn't leave no matter what I did. So I must have somehow either clicked him on to do something or he's being attracted to repair something or he, he did something that, that canceled out the uh, villager repair. And I think there's a, I'm pretty sure there's a kill this unit, right? But I, I, couldn't, I couldn't do that to that villager. He worked so hard. I didn't want to kill him. So we let him live out his life over there in peace, right? He doesn't have to worry about the constant raids by enemies. He doesn't have to worry about working. He's just chilling. Oops, I clicked healing. So, the Ajax got attacked here by the tower. And I got a little bit worried because I wanted to build a market there and send some donkeys. And here's where the enemies are coming from. I wanted to send some, uh, some of the donkey carts back and forth. But I was like, oh man, are they going to get destroyed by that tower? But... I was like, wait, I'm making catapults. I can just end this mission pretty quick here. I don't have to even worry about the donkeys that much. They won't die from the one or a couple uh, journeys that they have to make back and forth. Hey, but no, thank you guys for watching. As I say in all my videos, you guys are the reasons why I keep making this. I appreciate you guys. Thank you so much for doing it. It's always fun. I always try and find new content, new interesting things, and new facts for you guys. So thank you guys for doing that. Don't forget to like and subscribe on this. If you guys like this RTS Sunday, as soon as I'm done with the campaign, I'm going to do a full breakdown pretty much of the game of its, its highlights, its cons, uh, what I thought about it, some improvements it can make. Um, shout out some notable creators in the industry that are actually working on this game and whatnot. So we're going to do that at the end. If that's something that sounds like it interests you, stick around to the end. Um, if not, hey, check out some of my other videos. You might like them, especially Fable Friday. I do a lot of editing, mixing in that one. That's that's my more experimental uh, video editing kind of series. And if you guys are curious about like video editing, you want to do YouTube yourself, please, I am more than willing. I have a Discord, and I am more than willing to help you guys out, get started on that journey, and teach you the little things that I know. So if you like these videos, you like these voiceovers, and, or you want to learn a little bit more about it, please leave me a comment below. I will send, invite you guys to the Discord, and we will, I'll teach you guys everything that I know. Just because, you know, I would like to encourage people to do what they like, right? If you're not doing what you like, you know, you're going to be more more upset. And if you do something that you like, like you're going to feel much better about yourself. So even if, you know, it takes me a couple hours to make these videos a week, right? Because I do a couple series. So um, I do it for fun. And I do it because I like it. But in case you guys want to do it more seriously, please let me know. I will try and help you out with that. Well, you guys are about to see my favorite strategy here. Watch this underworld. We send in a Pegasus. Right? We drop an underworld. We get our Nemean Lions. And it's about to be GG, boys. So thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to watch the cutscene at the end here because it'll give you some exposition on what all that happened. But next, we get right into the uh, the Norse campaign. So you guys are gonna see some snowy boys. I thought I'd end my days as a pig on this miserable island. I owe you for rescuing me, but I must return home. Thank you, Arkantos. You're welcome. You owe us nothing, friend. We can spare a ship for you and your men to sail home in. Goodbye, old friend.
was nice to see you. It was a nice little moment there where they just say bye and, you know, in the uncertain world. So here, we're going to catch Norse. I'm going to give you guys a quick tutorial, and then uh, that there way you're ready for the next video. To remember when playing the Norse. Instead of building granaries or storehouses, the Norse bring their resources to mobile drop sites known as ox carts. Ox carts can be trained out of the town center and ordered to move almost anywhere on the map. Another difference for the Norse is how they gain favor. Instead of praying to their gods, the Norse gain favor through battle. Valhalla. They simply fight to please their gods. Whenever a Norse soldier is fighting anything in the game, your favor will increase. The final difference is that all Norse buildings are constructed or repaired by infantry units. Norse gatherers can only build farms and collect resources. The gatherers have it much Any easier Norse than Norse. infantry unit can build and repair buildings. So that's a Norse. I'll catch you guys on the next one. See ya.